Do you plan to propose to somebody the old school way? Or do you maybe want to gift yourself a diamond? Now traditionally, you would have thought of what your budget is and accordingly chosen a diamond which fits cut, color, clarity, carrot, etc. Clearly, it does not work that way anymore. You first decide whether you want a naturally mined diamond or a lab-grown one. Now, we know that lab-grown diamonds are more affordable while sharing the same chemical properties as naturally mined diamonds. They're also increasingly gaining greater acceptance and popularity. Still, we know so little about how lab-grown diamonds are manufactured. Let's try and scratch the surface. Not literally. The journey of a lab-grown begins with a diamond seed. The, a so small plate of diamond is kept in a reactor in which we replicate the Earth's environment using different temperatures, different carbon-rich gases and different pressures. So we create an environment in which the diamond can grow. So what happens is in that environment, the seed, the carbon atoms from the gases is deposited on it and a rough diamond is formed. Once the rough diamond is formed, the whole process of planning, of cutting, of polishing, of grading, of setting into jewelry is exactly the same of mine diamonds, that of mine diamonds. So one part of the manufacturing industry is exactly the same, right? And uh, the only thing that has been added to this industry is the growing facility. So like you saw, the reactors th that are present in the facility enable us to make rough using the solar and wind power that we have generated uh, across 100 acres of land and a total 35 megawatts of green energy. So once the diamond is grown and the rough is formed, we uh, ask, there's a planning department, right? The planning department uh, plans the ideal diamond that comes out of the rough diamond. So they have the scanning technology in which the rough diamond is scanned and then we place potential diamond uh, extracts in the planning system. We select uh, according to the market demand, according to the yield percentage, according to cut that sets in, we decide what stone to extract out of it. Then there is a there's a few markings that we make on the rough diamonds using laser technology. After that, using laser again, we cut those diamonds into a basic diamond shape. Once those uh, basic shapes have been achieved, we give it to the artisans. Those are the skilled laborers who have done only cutting and polishing all their life it's a generational skill very hard to replicate very hard to master and these experts beautifully craft those diamonds into the brilliant final products we've seen we see the lab grown diamond is graded exactly the same way a mine diamond is the same grading agencies popularly gia igi they grade lab grown diamonds they use the same parameters to grade the def colors the VVSs, the VSs, uh, what the cut is, is it an excellent cut, is it an ideal cut, what the symmetry is. The parameters of grading this diamond is exactly the same. Uh, the hardness of the diamond is exactly the same. The chemical composition of the uh, diamond is exactly the same. So it has the same chemical optical nature of the mine diamond. And uh, when it comes to the naked eye, it is impossible for people to tell what the difference is. A typical uh, price of the lab grown diamond is, I would say the average price, uh, average size diamond. A one carat diamond would be around one fifth or one eighth the price of a, a mine diamond. This lab grown diamond is a type 2A diamond. Uh, what I mean by type 2A is, there are four types of diamonds. There are type 1A, 1B, 2A and 2B. 2A diamond is the purest form of diamond on a molecular level. As somebody here put it, we're moving from diamonds are forever to diamonds are for everyone.